continue pouring in uh, for South Africa's uh, Zondeni Veronica Sobukwe, the wife of the PAC founder Robert Mangalisa Sobukwe. Mama Sobukwe, affectionately known as uh, the mother of Azania, died at the age of 91. A former struggle stalwart and anti-apartheid activist, she was honored with the Order of Lutuli in silver. To discuss this uh, passing and who she was, I'm now joined by Senior Research Fellow at the Trade Collective, Lebahang Pecho. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Peter. Uh, you know, I was just thinking as I was driving to work today that, that there's a whole generation of people, mm. young people in particular, who might know the name Sobukwe, mm. but didn't know uh, his wife. Mm. Tell us a little bit about why the ANC and PAC mm -hmm. and everybody is in shock and mourning in the way that they are. So there are many reasons. The one mm. is the, the woman that she was. Um, she was a soft-spoken woman, extremely dynamic. And I think that one, one thing that we forget in struggle is that when you know, we've fallen into the whole pitfall of, um, of hero politics uh, and, and the politics of, rene of relegation. So she's been relegated to a side, a side note in historical referencing in this country and beyond. And she deserves much more than that. Mm -hmm. We've also fallen into the pitfall of um, wife politics. You know, people are wives, mothers and daughters, but not standalone political agents and political revolutionaries. She wrote to the apartheid uh, uh, colonial regime several times demanding the release of Ntate Mangali mm -hmm. Sosobuk, where, of course, all of these requests were denied. She also, at one point, offered to go to Robben Island when she could see that his health was diminishing under what remained suspicious circumstances. Mm. Um, and of course, that was also denied. And thirdly, she also wrote many times demanding that she, he and her, his whole family be repatriated out of the country permanently for, the, for, his, good, for his own good, mm. because she recognized that there was probably some attempt to, to diminish his life expectancy, which of course came to pass 40 years ago. It's an irony that 40 years ago, of course, um, that Deb Sobukwe himself passed away. Mm. Um, I was a tiny thing. I was at the memorial, which um, was addressed in Lusaka. And I think it's very unfortunate that even there, we have, we have, fought, we have not been able to excavate um, her voice. And this is in common with many other women's voices, women revolutionaries, um, you know, in this country and beyond. I think the second thing that's, very, uh, that's really unfortunate and, and quite a disgrace and an indictment on the post-1994 dispensation is that even though Sobukwe's voice was silenced and expunged by the apartheid colonial regime, it is extremely uh, um, regrettable and a disgrace that it continues to be expunged and silenced post-1994. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appear in curricula, it doesn't appear in museum, it doesn't appear in popular discourses and media. Um, you know, the, 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 the prominence of the Sobuku Foundation is far less than the Nelson Mandela Foundation, for example. And I think these are, these are deliberate mm -hmm. you know, acts of ongoing erasure an ongoing historical genocide, which is a really great disservice mm. to both ourselves, the ones who have gone, and the ones who have yet to come. So her, her passing might be an opportunity then mm. to rewrite the history and to tell it properly. I think so. I mean, I think I mean, many of us were engaged with um, trying to rewrite and excavate um, Nomzamo Matigizela Mandela just a few months ago. And I think that um, Mrs. Sobukwe, Veronica Sobukwe, falls into a similar category. And even more so because she didn't play to the politics of the spectacular and the theatrical. Mm. She wasn't an out there kind of politician. Remember that the strain of being married to um, a particular icon, such as Ndate Sobukwe, didn't come without a price. She herself was tortured. She herself lived in banishment, even though it was not judicial banishment, but she herself lived in banishment. It was difficult to associate with people like her because just by association, one could be arrested, one could be tortured, one could be interrogated, one could even disappear. She she endured that whilst trying to give her family, her four children, some semblance of normalcy. Mm. But what is normal within those times? And, and I think that really this is a, a good opportunity for us to stop vandalizing our history mm. and continuously picking at the things that suit us um, and feeding into this mono narrative, this mono story and diversify mm. our memory, diversify and democratize our history. And, and I guess also, uh, as you were saying, that uh, sometimes you've got uh, a strong husband whose name is more prominent, mm. but uh, he met her as a result of her being on the front line, mm. uh, resisting mm. and uh, marching. So 
she'd already started her own journey of resistance long before she, he, she met uh, her husband. In many instances, many women meet at the front line, mm. meet their husband, their struggle husbands at the front line. Mm. I mean, this is what, you know, you resonate. It's either, you know, if your husband is a pastor, you meet in church. If he's a revolutionary, you meet because you two are a revolutionary. And I think these are, these are things that we forget mm. because we, we fall into sort of um, erasing, and erasing women. And also, we like hero politics. Um, men's politics, um, mm. and we want to valorize men and behave as though states mm. and, and history and revolutions are only masculine. And, 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 and certainly in the case of Mesobukwe, there's a lot to be said as well about the way that we treat veterans at large across mm. political lines. We forget them. We, we are, it's almost as though veterans become an embarrassment. I don't know if anybody has asked the question of what she was living on, yeah. what her pension looked like, what was the state of her home. Um, fortunately, we have you know close familial relations but I think that at large as a mm. community do we ask ourselves these questions mm. you've mentioned some of the things that she did I wonder if you can share with us perhaps what were her values what did she stand for mm. what, what does she represent mm. so she was a very centered woman I think it's, it's important to remember that mm. both she and um, Mangali Sosobukwe came from a very strong like many leaders of the time were, were influenced strongly by Christian values and a Christian ethic, um, brought, up in, you know, brought up in mission schools, for that matter. So a lot of their thinking, even though they may not have framed it as such, was certainly along the lines of a form of liberation mm. theology. Um, and that, cert that there was an ethic, a social ethic, to be each other's keeper, to be our neighbor's keeper, to be our brother's and our sister's keeper. And that also that this was some kind of a mission. This was, a, this was not... This was not sunshine politics. Mm. This was not this, this was not stomach politics. There was no gravy train um, at the time. You know, this was really about doing mm. this for for posterity, um, loving people, doing this for a sense of love. And I think the kind of sacrificial politics that is really sadly lacking mm. um, in today's era. Uh, we've run out of time, but very briefly, um, like Mum Winnie, she was fearless and mm. put herself in front of uh, mm. this oppressor mm. and was not scared and i just wonder where did that lack of fear come from mm. born 1921 it was a mm. time when a women generally weren't allowed to say things mm. and yet here she was standing up in the forefront i actually think that women of a particular generation when i look at people of my mother's mm. and my parents generation or the Sobukwe generation, uh, Nomza Moma Di Gizela generation, and so on. Um, I am amazed at how much courage and how much um, dignity mm. under fire that they seemed to command. I think the idea that women in those days had nothing mm. to say mm. is also something that we must reframe. Mm. I think it's not so much that it has that they didn't say things, it's perhaps that they were not written. Mm. And this is a really important opportunity for us to write back into his story and her story, um, to write ourselves back into those narratives very, very deliberately and very intentionally. Because memory and history are intentional acts. We remember intentionally, we forget and we erase intentionally mm. also. All right, so we're going to have to leave it there, but I think uh, we certainly need to have more conversations and uh, perhaps poignantly in Women's Month that uh, mm. uh, such a strong woman uh, should be remembered in the right mm. way. Thank you so much indeed for Thank your you thoughts too. today. Mm. All right, so we're going to take a quick...